Today on Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about spiritual replenishment. How is your spiritual or religious life? Is it in need of some rejuvenation? Has your routine for the divine gotten stale and could use a fresh infusion? Would you like tips to fill your spiritual or religious cup? Learn how to spiritually restock and revive as we finish our month focusing on replenishment and rejuvenation. Does your clutter own you? On Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we'll teach you how to become aware of your clutter along with action steps to declutter and create the life you desire. Come on, let's get started. This is a great time to be recording this podcast episode because boy, do I feel rejuvenated and replenished. Someone just solved or explained something to me, a huge problem, and I'm so full, so rejuvenated right now. So yay, I'm doing the podcast episode. Today's episode was inspired because I was motivated after I left my coach and that women's group was my main source of spiritual nourishment. I did something else for a bit in between a Facebook group, but the guy was connected to my teacher and, and that was kind of some yuckiness and lots of moaning and groaning in the group, which you have to have the space for that. But in my spiritual life, I, I, I would don't want a ton of that. I hope it's not sounding as bad because you know, I'm always about expressing your feelings, but just wasn't the right fit for me. My spiritual practice is important to me and I needed to replenish it. When I stepped away, I needed the break. I was grateful for that. But now I'm in the process of changing that, of replenishing and rejuvenating it. And that was really what inspired today's episode. One of the things I figured out was that I needed community. So I found a book club. It's great. I'm the baby. When was the last time I was the youngest person in something? It's great being the baby. We don't read spiritual books, but we discuss life. And I love hearing different perspectives and contemplating life. And that's really important to me. Interesting group of women. And that rejuvenates me. That fills my cup. I'm going to use the word spiritual throughout. And one of the reasons I got the habits, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. Physical, emotional, emotional, religious just doesn't sound right. So if you have a religious practice, please substitute that when I say spiritual, because what I'm going to talk about today applies there as well. So don't get caught up in word choice. Spiritual is what I use. Substitute if universe, whatever word fits best for you. How to replenish your spiritual practice. What I'm about to share isn't quite directly related to your actual practice, but when you replenish your soul, you replenish your practice. Because I think that that's part of it. If your soul's yearning or feeling unfulfilled, how can you replenish that? Reconnect with your youth. What did you like to do when you were younger? I always, when I was six, I said I wanted to be an archaeologist so I could bring my mother bones for her birthday present. Eh, maybe I was a little bit of a weird kid. What did you dream that you'd be when you'd grow up? What make you, made you excited? What TV shows did you watch? Or band that you listened to? 80s music, here we come. Now, don't worry. I'm not going to reconnect with blue eyeshadow. Figure out what got you excited and got you going as a child and find a way to reconnect with that. Be grateful and positive. This is also a part of connecting to your youth because a lot of times this was a lot easier. You know, I, the thing that I'm really excited about and it's so great to be recording the podcast episode now is because it had to deal with adulting. Sometimes adulting and dealing with mortgages and stuff like that is not fun. And when you don't have those additional responsibilities and are more carefree, especially the younger you are, it's easier to be grateful and positive. You weren't jaded by life. You didn't have to adult. 
How can you reconnect that with your youth? What were you always positive about? What made you excited? Be social. This has been a challenge for me as my social circles have really shifted within a year. I had done meetups. I had my, my business was the first part, hanging out with that, but that shifted. I had a spiritual community, a church that I just some things happened and wasn't a right fit for me anymore than the women's group. So all these have gone away. And my husband and I tend to be homebodies. So I'm really working on this. The book club was a way to get community. And I'm going to continue to work on that. I'd like to find a place where we can find a spiritual home, spiritual community. And that's really important to make the effort. I'm going to do newcomers activities. And I never did any of that when I moved to Raleigh and, you know, maybe get back to meet up. But look for ways to be social. How can you do that to replenish your soul? Really hanging out with people and having awesome conversation makes me really happy. So the book club is bringing that in, even though it's not a spiritual book club. Change your routine. Do something differently. You know, I talked earlier about using Oracle cards. Hadn't looked at those in a while, and I feel moved to use those again. So that's something part of my routine that's different. It's exciting. I'm really enjoying it. So how can you do something differently? And, you know, it doesn't have to be the huge things. And, you know, the Oracle cards are something that's spiritual, but maybe you take a class in a new language and that opens up possibilities. Maybe you're like, oh my gosh, now I want to travel here. And so it might not be a huge awakening of your soul. You're just doing something differently, but it can allow that. It can give that space to bring that in. Hang out with kids. When I hang out with kids, really of any age, I have, I just get renewed. I love hearing what kids are thinking or feeling and their ideas and they have this energy and again, they're still not jaded and romance and love. And you do not have to be in a relationship for romance and love. We all desire to be loved. Romance yourself if you're single. When was the last time you brought yourself flowers? Cooked yourself an amazing dinner? There are ways that we can love ourselves and take care. Look, think about when you're putting on your face cream. Do you just like slap it on or do you massage it? Do you think, oh, it feels so good on my face and you gently and lovingly put the cream on your face. Bring back romance and love and we can all love ourselves more. We really can. And that would be a place to start. And again, when you doing these things to replenish your soul. It's, it's allowing, it's bringing, it's opening that space for rejuvenation, for love, for all the things you desire. Exercise, eat well. The better you take care of this physical vehicle, the more it's going to help you spiritually. My big, I'm going to talk about this, what I've been doing so far on my progress on my goals, because the books were the goal, big goal last year. This is my health. Stretching, weight, lifting weights, drinking more water. When I feel my best, it not only helps me support people, but it's part of my spiritual practice. I feel I'm more open to my divine wisdom when I take care of myself. I'm open to following through my intuition, take care of myself, open myself up and can access that, what my soul wants me to hear, what my soul desires for me to hear. Get away. Get away. It doesn't, again, have to be a big trip overseas. Get away even for the day. Look in your backyard, but get away. Be still. When was the last time you just sat? You maybe closed your eyes. Maybe did some deep breathing. You weren't thinking about what you had to cook for dinner. You weren't thinking about the meeting tomorrow. You're completely present. Just listening. 
Just be still. No agenda. That's hard for a lot of us to do. When, can you just take a moment now? Sorry, guys, let's take a moment. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath and just be still. If that was really hard for you, I'm going to encourage you to get more of that into your day. Listen. Now, this can have a couple of different meanings in the sense that listening to yourself, listening to your soul, listening to your intuition, and listening to others. How many times when you're talking with someone, are you truly engaged, listening to what they have to say? And then how many times are you waiting for your next point to share? Or as you're reading or listening, you are waiting to respond, rebut. Are you fully engaged in active listening? Meditate. Even five minutes a day can make a huge difference. Meditation allows you to connect with your soul. And if you haven't, again, taken the time to be still and listen and meditate, do that now. That allows you, I've had some of the most profound experiences while meditating. And there are lots of options out there. I first tried to do it where you sit on the little zafu, I believe it's how it's pronounced. And they said, imagine a piece of rice between your lips. And I'm like, imagine a piece of rice. Got me all crazy and couldn't do it. But I found transcendental meditation, which works for me. Be present. Be present. The more you do that, you can listen to your soul. You have your point of power to change. You have your point of power to create your reality. How present are you? How many times are you living the past or living the future? Most of us are anywhere with the present. Simply being present for five minutes can soothe your soul. It can inspire your soul. It can connect you to your soul. Forgive someone. Who do you need to forgive? As you all know, I take a very holistic view on organizing, on decluttering, mindfulness, all that fun stuff. And so for 30 days, I am sending love, sending good vibrations, good thoughts, praying, all that good stuff to one person. So a couple minutes a day, I do that. And January, I'll just share with you as my husband. I mean, how hard is that? I love the guy. My goal with that, because I'm going to change it up every month, is to do that to a couple of people that I don't like so well and that I haven't quite forgiven for some things that they've done. My hope with doing that is it will allow me to forgive them. It will allow me to say, okay, if I have to spend, send them love every day, then I'm hoping that that can shift our forgiveness. Again, when you hold on to that and the unable to forgive and the bitterness and the anger, whatever else is going on there, that blocks your soul. That, your soul doesn't appreciate that. That doesn't support your soul. Your soul doesn't enjoy it. So who can you forgive? Are you overwhelmed by clutter? Do you feel stuck in your life? Does something need to change, but you're not sure what? How to declutter your home and your life is a 21-day decluttering challenge that focuses on helping you become aware of your clutter. Each day, you'll have a bite-sized lesson. Many times when you have clutter in your life, you're overwhelmed, so the lessons are short. You'll have a list of ways to move forward to declutter your life. You can order from Amazon, Google Play, iBooks, or directly from me at reawakenyourbrilliance.com with a pet. It's another thing I'm, I'm doing is making sure to play with the cats each day. And you know what? I'm relaxed when I do it. I enjoy it. I do feel that soulful connection. And until I was a cat mommy, never got that, never understood it. But playing with a pet is something that is great. You don't have a pet, consider volunteering at a rescue or shelter. They definitely need your support. Explore. What do you want to explore? Like when I was a kid, I used to like to explore the woods. Can you explore a topic of interest? 
can you explore your own house? How could you see your own house for a different view if you were someone coming in for the first time? What is it that you'd like to explore? Create a sacred space. I have a sacred space in my home and that's where I can focus, that's where I can meditate, that honors my soul, it honors my spirituality, it honors my commitment to being the best woman I can be. And it doesn't have to be an entire room, mine's not, it's a little area in my guest room set up. Focus on what you can control. We get off our spiritual path, our religious path, we get off in frustration when things are out of our control and we can't control them when we think we can or we get frustrated because we can and that just takes us down the wormhole. You can control you, your thoughts, your feelings, your reactions and how you behave. Focus on that. Laugh. When is it last time you cracked up and just had that full belly awesomeness laughter? I do it a lot with Max. Max helps me laugh at myself, and that's not always easy for me to do. So have those big laughs. They have, um, I think, a laughing yoga. Go look at a baby laughing online, like on a YouTube video. You will crack up. Laugh more. That helps release your tension. That helps. And we're laughter, we're in joy. Appreciate your life right now. I really believe love and gratitude are the highest vibrations and when we appreciate what we have right now in the moment, that's a way, here's how I view it. Truly, I view it as acknowledging your soul, saying, okay, this is where we are. I am okay. Thank you. I appreciate all that I have around me. It just, again, gives you that lightness, gives you that gratitude, allows you to rise your vibration and connect more freely and fully with your soul. Listen to inspiring music or read inspiring text. That's a sure way to connect you with your soul. I was talking with someone the other day and they just love music and they just tell me how much that inspires them and they, they get in that frame of mind. I mean, I think that's so beautiful. Ask for support. You know what? I'm, I'm, I need some support now. I can't find my soul. I can't connect with my soul. I talked to my dear, dear teacher Judy the other day and I laughed because she's like, yeah, you're, let's, let's do some healing and movement here because you're, you've been turning away. Your higher self has all this knowledge and you haven't, you've been concerned about, you've been looking to others instead of yourself, which was true. Nervous that I was going to make the wrong decision. So I needed support. So I called Judy and said, hey, can we do a, a reading healing? Determine your why. What is your why? Why do you get up in the morning? Because that might be in your mission statement. And what you're working on to accomplish. What gives you a sense of purpose? And again, that can change. Don't feel like it's static. Life is about change and movement. What gets you grooving? What gets you excited? What gets you out of the bed in the morning? And if you're not sure what your why is, this is a great time to do it, to replenish your soul. Think about that and work on that. Figure out your why. How to rejuvenate. We've replenished a bit. So let's do some rejuvenation. And again, these are mix and match, do what feels good. But here are some ways to rejuvenate. We've got our soul going on, some other ways. Chill out. Chillax. Again, when is it time you just hung out and just chilled? My husband and I are re-watching all the Harry Potter movies. So we just watched number two last night. So probably about once a week, we're doing the film. And I mean, talk about laughter, connecting with youth, wishing I had a Hermione around to take care of some things. Did all of that. And it was just fun to sit with, it was really cold last night here, had a fire on, sat with the hubs, held hands, the cats were all around, and we watched Harry Potter, relaxing and rejuvenating. Let go of the loser. Switch that to the positive. You're not losing weight. 
you're gaining muscle. You're gaining endurance, whatever it is. So don't focus on the loss part. You're not losing a relationship. You are perhaps gaining freedom, gaining more soulful time. How can you switch around that to be positive? So I have a friend that's through a divorce and I checked in with her. I said, how are you doing? And she said, I'm living my life unapologetically. I absolutely love that. Living her life unapologetically. So she's not focused on the loss of a marriage and a divorce. She's focused on unapologetically living her life. So how, whatever that is, it's going on in your life. How can you switch that? How can you tweak that? Journal. I'm a huge fan of journaling. One of the reasons why I created the journal prompt books was because I think journaling is so valuable when you're relaxed and you're focused and you can do that. You can really gain valuable insight. Talk about connecting with your soul. Your soul wants to share with you. Your soul wants to give you knowledge. It needs a vehicle to do that. So whether it's something like a journal prompt book or just taking a blank page and writing, can't think, just start writing. Something will come out. Connect with loved ones. And this is a little different than romance. One of the things I have been doing is reconnecting with friends through college. And your know, life happens. We're all busy. I'll get things to do. But I've been going through and having phone conversations. Forget email. Forget whatever. FaceTiming and checking in. And that's been really wonderful. And that's been extremely wonderful. So who in your life can you reconnect with? Have a nice cup of coffee. You can have tea over FaceTime if someone's not in the same town. But reconnect with people you love. Travel. Where is it that you've always wanted to go? And if you're like, you know what, my finances don't allow it right now, take a trip to the library. Go online and look at YouTube. There is a solution if you're open to it. But travel within your backyard. So travel. Again, own, own your own backyard or travel to Europe, travel to Iceland, whatever makes you happy. Read more. One of the things, one, one part of the book club, but also one of the big goals was to unplug. And so one of the ways I'm doing it to not watch TV is reading a lot more, which is great. I love to read. I'm someone who, since I was a child, would read before bed. So I'm just continuing to read more. And it doesn't have to be, again, like a spiritual book that connects with my soul, but I read, I love Jody. Colt. I don't know if that's how you say her name. I think she is probably the best contemporary American writer in this country. And what fascinates me by her is she can, she writes on such a wide variety of subjects and she gets to the heart and soul of people. And she's phenomenal. So I just finished one of her books, but it made me think, it made me think about questions and, and it, it did, it was soulful. Go to the spa, go to the spa get a massage. We have a salt cave. It's pretty groovy. Whether it's a simple manicure. And again, if you are, don't have the finances, have a spa day with your girlfriend. Do each other's manicures and pedicures and give each other facials and all that. You can do it. Volunteer. When we do for others, we do for ourselves. That lifts up them up. It lifts us up. I get a charge, and I get excited, and I get happy, whatever I do for someone else. A volunteer. And if you don't have time, donate in a cause you believe in. Okay, you know, at the end of the year, we have all the appeals. We donated to a bunch of different cat causes. It was awesome. Like I always say to the cats, yes, I talk to my cats, and it was been really cold the past couple of nights. I said, oh, you know, we have to pray for all the cats and dogs that are outside to give them good love and energy and hope that they get rescued. I'm looking to volunteer, but being able, it wasn't a ton of money, but I know that I and we are supporting organizations that speak to my soul, helping animals, helping the environment. Scream at the top of your lungs and let it out. Now, thankfully, I will not be doing that. But I'm telling you, man, man, man scream and moo, and I'm telling you, after five minutes, you might be exhausted, but you feel good. You feel really good. Just let all that stuck, stagnant energy that's getting in the way of your soul, let it out. Let it out. Stretch. 
Stretch. That's my other one of my big things for this year, stretching daily. Although I'm going to give you a tip that a 70-year-old at the woman, I said, I'm stealing this. When I'm on a weight machine, I stretch in between reps. And she said, yeah, the older you get, you have to do this. So I'm going to stretch a little bit as YouTubers can see me moving a little bit. But stretch. I mean, just letting your body move. What's your, ask your body, does it want to dance? How does it want to move? Do that honor movement in your life. Clean your house. You know, I'm all about energy. Everything's energy. So if it's kind of stuck and stagnant, we, as we are decluttering and going through the house and I'm excited, I'm looking at a pile of stuff we're going to sell, pile of stuff we're going to donate. It feels good. Clean, get some good, clean in your house helps clean your soul. And again, decluttering, letting go of what doesn't serve you. What can you bring in? Go on a retreat. Go on a retreat. Again, that allows you to silent retreat, connect with your soul. What I want to do is do a silent retreat and bring my paints and start painting again. Something I discovered I'm actually decent doing and just with everything, haven't had the time. But I'm, that's how I'm looking to connect. So look for your creativity. How can you replenish your soul by painting or, you know, you're not good at pottery, take a pottery class. Creativity is messy. It doesn't have to be this perfect thing that comes out. Rediscover. You know, I mentioned rediscovering oracle cards and doing affirmations again. I've rediscovered affirmations because I have an app that makes it easy to use those. I'm like, ah, I've forgotten how much great this is and how much I enjoy this. What can you rediscover in your life? Take action from today's podcast. Create a list of ways you'd like to replenish. Discover ways to rejuvenate yourself. Be still. Reawaken different spiritual or religious practices. Fill your spiritual cup. Share your rejuvenation and replenishment with others. Go out. Clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Clearing your clutter allows you to share your gifts with the world. Get your free self-assessment to discover your clutter priority at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.